I'm here, everybody, with uh, Rosie Tran. You're watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Please hit the, the like button and share this out on your social media. So, Rosie, we were just talking about uh, Bitcoin and, and most cryptocurrencies just taking a huge crash in the last 24 hours um, and predicated by Elon Musk, which we both agree is a scam that he's using. He's probably buying up a bunch of Bitcoin as we speak. He probably Absolutely. helped drive it from 46,000 to 50,000 in the last couple hours. It's just gone up. You're um, telling me that a man that sells solar panels that has an electric car company does not understand the basic engineering of electrical mining. He probably understands more than 90% of people out there, including people in the crypto and Bitcoin community. He has engineers. This is all they do for a living. He yeah. definitely understands that Bitcoin can be a green, um, can be mined in a green right. way. He just did it to drop. He just did it to push the price down. So buy, buy the dip. Always, I always tell everybody, buy the dip, do your own research, only spend what you're fine, what you're comfortable with. I'm not a financial expert, but buy the dip. Um, so I want to talk to you now, since we, we've, we've, we've mapped out how the Bitcoin is bad for the environment is a myth that's pushed mainly by the ruling elites because the central banking system, they profit from it. And, yes. and I think, and I, I think some people do push it that don't understand it. So exactly. I, I know a lot of people that have asked me genuinely, Rosie, I'm so concerned about this environmental thing. I'm a huge environmental person. And so I think those people are being fed misinformation. Absolutely. I would look, I'm a huge environmentalist and I, and I, and I would, if I wasn't paying attention to Bitcoin and I heard all this stuff, I would probably go, uh Oh, it's bad, but, but I would do research. So I, I get that some people are, are, are just genuinely, they genuinely concern about the environment and they hear this information and they hear this like, Oh my God, it's using as much energy as Vegas. And you go, Oh, and you think that's crazy. And they don't think of the big, and they're, 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 they're deliberately being misled. And obviously anytime people are being deliberately misled, it's coming from the people that the ruling elites are doing this. So exactly. You have to follow the money. Why is this information being put out? It doesn't make any sense. Right. Who, who does Bitcoin hurt? Exactly. <laughs> That's what you got to look at it. You got to look at it. I always say in the show, follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. So who does Bitcoin hurt? It hurts the central banks. It hurts the fossil fuel industry. It hurts the military industrial complex. It, it hurts exactly. all of these big industries and they pay, they high, they own both political parties. They own all the media. You think you're getting the better news because you watch MSNBC instead of Fox or vice versa. You're just getting a different type. You're just getting a certain slightly different. Of, yeah. It's just, well, it's just, you're just getting this type of propaganda. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's like you, you think cherry flavored Coke zero is different than it's still Coke. So, um, <laughs> but I want to talk to you about how do you see this? Obviously, this this tactic by by Elon Musk, the SEC hasn't caught up yet. They don't they don't know how to regulate. And I'm I, I'm I'm sort of torn because I don't know that I want the SEC to jump in. But when Elon Musk is clearly manipulating, I I I don't know. But where do you see this playing out? Because we were on this like Bitcoin was moving sideways; it was sort of consolidating. But the altcoins, specifically Ethereum, hit an all time high of forty three hundred or something like that. Um, yeah. Litecoin was moving up, Bitcoin Cash was moving up, all these other altcoins led by Ethereum, obviously, which is the number one altcoin was, and everyone's talking about all these other YouTube shows, excuse me, YouTube shows that I watch are like, we're heading into an altcoin season. Ethereum's going to be at 10 or 20 grand by August or September. Everyone's got these predictions and they're basing them on very solid uh, market analysis and market cap and stuff like that. So now that this wild card got thrown in there, where do you see things going? And, and how do you see, since the federal government and the Janet Yellens of the world are scrambling right now and they're using their, the puppets like Bill Maher to scare regular people that don't know enough about it. Where do you see this? Where do you see this happening? Obviously you're going to come on my show in about three to four weeks and go, see, we told you Elon Musk just announced fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that's going to happen. Um, but what, it may what, not be three. It may be not three or four months. But I guarantee he has something in the works. Um, something. I'm I'm really excited, Graham. I'm really excited about this. You know, the estimates are that um, three million new crypto wallets are coming up every single week, and people are signing up for accounts. So the information cannot be stopped, and that's one of the great things about decentralization. Um, there is a network effect to it. So you know, you tell people, I tell people, and we all tell our friends. 
And, you know, sometimes it takes, I, I have friends that I've been telling about Bitcoin and crypto since 2013, and wow. they have just come forward saying, hey, I kind of like want to know about it now. <laughs> so um, I, I'm really excited for the future. I think that, um, I, I actually think that the fact that a Bitcoin and crypto have this veil of being very complicated, even though it's not, uh, deterred a lot of, um, you know, the Janet Yellens of the world from doing more research. And also they didn't take it seriously. So they were scrambling. And now a lot of big hedge funds and other Wall Street people are getting in. And I think that's a good thing, too, because even though I, I want the little guy in, um, I think a lot of these guys are buddies of people up in Washington. And so they're not going to regulate their buddies. And so that's a positive. But um, what I really think is that um, these projects are really exciting. And I do think that there will be a recovery. Uh, I've been watching Bitcoin and crypto since 2013 when I got it, interested in it. I had a, a pro crypto guest on Out of the Box podcast, my podcast, and I watched it. I was, you know, too scared to invest for a really long time, and I watched it go up and down and up and down. And every single time Bitcoin or crypto has a crash, the mainstream media goes in and says it's dead, it's over. Look, yeah. it's dead. And then what happens? More people find out about it, and more people get really excited about it. Because it's not just, you know, a speculative investment. It's a promise of a future of a decentralized government, um, not government, decentralized finance, where the little guy can win. And I think that's the biggest thing that drew me to it is that it's a financial revolution. You know, after um, the theory is that Satoshi, uh, the creator, was a cypherpunk and he was upset about the central bank bailouts. So um, he was anti-government and he was disgusted, he or she or they were disgusted by the central banks being bailed out with our government tax dollars. You know, they're claiming that they can't afford universal health care. They're claiming that they can't afford UBI, but they can afford to bail out the biggest, most corrupt banks in the world. So I think people are a little bit tired. I think millennials and, and Gen Xers and, and um, the newer generation, they're tired. I mean, look at what they've had to go through. A lot of the young kids under 20, they've been, they've only know, known war in Afghanistan. They've only known the United States at war. They've only known recessions. They've only known, you know, massive student loan debt. So something has to change. And I think that this is the perfect time for something like this. I really, really do, Graham. And I'm very, very positive about the future because people like you who have a passion for everyday people and, you know, all of my friends across the board, believe it or not, from left to right, really support this because people are sick of, you know, the corporations being in bed with the government. They're just tired of it. Yeah. And it's really, it's funny. Like when I hear older people like, ah, these millennials, I go that generation and the younger and the Gen Z, they've had to deal with, like you say, nothing but war. They saw, and this is a, like the, the GameStop thing that happened when that happened. If you read in the Reddit comments, it was a lot of people going, Hey, the last housing crash, my dad lost his job. We lost our home. My mom's exactly. retirement was taken. Like my dad killed himself. We had an opioid problem. Like this, this, these, the, a lot of the problems that are hitting America, like the opioid epidemic, a lot of that is because people got wiped out 10 years ago. They, they're, they're like, there's no hope. There's no American dream anymore. Exactly. And, so and not just that, but most people that are in jail for crimes, they're financial crimes. So what that tells me, and it's not, you know, white collar financial crimes, Graham, it's financial crimes, crimes like stealing a, you know, yeah. a 10 bucks or using, you know, a fake $20 bill because you don't have enough money to pay the bills. So a lot of people that are in jail are in jail for financial crimes and petty financial crimes. And so what does that tell me? That tells me they were trying to feed their family. That tells me that they couldn't get enough to make ends meet and they were really desperate because nobody wants to go to jail for stealing like 20 bucks, Graham, seriously. Nobody wants to go to jail and have it on their record and never be able to work again. And it's just silly to think that these people are criminals and thugs and again, you know, a lot of people are in jail for, you know, selling marijuana and other, you know, violent and victimless crimes. So yeah. people are desperate. People are tired. And the younger generation is tired. And so I feel very, very hopeful. You know, I really don't care what someone's politics are, if they're a good person and they have a good intention. And I've seen people on both sides of the aisle um, saying, you know, I'm pro crypto because, you know, I'm sick of this corruption. I'm sick of, you know, socialism for the corporations. And we're just tired of it. You're, you're telling me that you can't afford to pay for someone's insulin, but you can afford to, um, you know, I was uh, working at Wells Fargo and, and um, Jack Stumpf uh, did that huge crisis and he got a hundred million dollar bonus, Graham. Yeah. 
He got a hundred. I thought it was a hundred and twenty million dollars severance package. He left. It was a severance package and a bonus. And you want to hear the crazy thing is that they tell these lies that they're regulating the financial industry. Again, I was a twenty thousand dollar a year paid assistant, and they were regulating me. They were actually combing through my my four hundred one k for insider trading because of the new laws that were passed after two thousand eight to pretend to regulate the financial industry. So they were worried about me, a $20,000 a year assistant doing insider trading. Meanwhile, the CEO gets a $120,000 severance package. I'm not sure if that really adds up, but it, it didn't add up to me. Well, that's I'm, that's this constant narrative that I'm so tired of. Like you see something in the news, like somebody like, you know, was getting unemployment when they shouldn't have. Oh, well, I tell you what, first let's round up all these assholes on wall street. When they get all put in jail, then we can go look at someone who got an extra six grand because they were trying to make it through a pandemic. Like I, exactly. I, I just I, like, exactly. Like, it, you know, doing there's a lot of policing of the poor. There's a lot of punishing the poor. There's a lot of policing and punishing of the middle class. Yeah. And if you look at the tax incentives, even Biden's $400,000 um, capital gains in tax, it's only going to hurt the middle class. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of rich people, they don't actually make over $400,000 in income because their income comes from capital gains and real estate and other things like that. So the people that are making this money are, um, you know, the upper middle class or the middle class. And so they're pretending like they're punishing the rich, but the rich have very expensive lawyers and attorneys and CPAs, and they're not going to pay this tax. Who's going to pay this tax program? Unfortunately, people like us. Right. They never pay it. They, they, the, look, the tax laws are written by the rich. Exactly. So they have all this loophole stuff. They have a corporate, they run everything through their corporation and pay $0 in taxes. I mean, it's they, a they show. It's a show. So Biden can say, look, I'm, I'm liberal. I care about the little guy, but he knows very well that this whole tax thing is a it's a scam. Rich people do not make over $400,000 in income. The way the law is written is in income. Right. Oh yeah. They just, they, and the, the rich people do shit. Like they'll have a $20 million investment portfolio and they'll borrow against it. They'll get a line of credit on 30% of its value. And so they're like, oh, I'm living on credit. Oh, you I know, lost money. Right. That's what Trump did. He said he lost money and that's why he was able to pay $700 in taxes because he was running his real estate business at a loss. Yeah. And so, you know, people get really excited when they hear, oh, well, Biden's finally going to, you know, pass the law. And it's, it's not, it's all fake. Which is a more reason for everybody to, um, to, to start educating themselves on Bitcoin. And yes. much of my audience in the last year has gotten more educated and I see it in the chat. They're like, oh, I've, Graham, I, I bought $250 of Bitcoin last year when you told me to, and now it's worth 1500 or whatever. And I, and I, yeah. and I, I, I love, I love hearing that because it, it, it will become the world's reserve currency. I believe that like, that's what it's going to, what's going to happen to it. And I had Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert on the show who are Bitcoin maximalists. And they said, you can't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you because it, it exactly. was written by whoever this person or persons wrote this. It's, it's brilliant. It can't be altered or changed. And, and the blockchain, like we're going to find out what Elon Musk did. That's the thing I love about the blockchain. We're going to find we're out. We're going to see. It's going to be clear and transparent, mm -hmm. which you cannot say the central bankers are transparent. We, nobody knows how much they're actually printing. They say tr 3 trillion. Who knows? Nobody how mu knows how much Jerome Powell the, the Fed chair, he's worth $8 million plus. So I don't know how he made his money, but I'm assuming that um, it had something to do with banking and, and, and shady central banking dealings. You know, these dealings are going on every day and we don't know what's happening behind closed doors, but with Bitcoin, you know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's even, even this like manipulation by Elon Musk, we are, we're going to know exactly we're gonna know. <laughs> We're going to know. So it's like, oh, Bitcoin can be manipulated like the stock market. Yeah, but we know exactly what happened. There's no like, who, how did this? It's like, no, Elon did it. He bought 10 million during the dip. We're going to find out. It's, it's, uh, he's going to launch some, you know, solar mining thing soon, you know, and, uh, you can hook your Tesla up to a Bitcoin solar powered mine or whatever the fuck he's going to come up with. And, <laughs> And, and then, oh, wow, the Tesla stock is going to go through the roof and he's going to say, well, you know, we, now we accept green Bitcoin or whatever bullshit <laughs> marketing thing they're going to put on it. They're going to put a green leaf around the Bitcoin symbol and go, oh, Tesla gets the green. I only want to, I only want to use the green Bitcoin. <sighs> so, um, uh, 
But it is, like you say, it is the most empowering thing for working regular people around the globe. You can it is, and, and not just that, Graham, but the when you see people that are really getting into Bitcoin, it's in a lot of third world countries, a lot of countries in Africa and Venezuela, where the where the central banking is so corrupt that their currency is being devalued to zero. I mean, unfortunately, that's very sad. But in America, because we have a strong you know petrodollar and the U.S. dollar is the you know the world currency reserve we're slower to adoption but in these countries where there's just rampant corruption to the point where it's so obvious and people you know just know about every single person you know it, it's taking on quicker than it ever has because you know you can be walking around and have um a, a phone with you with you know two thousand dollars three thousand dollars of, of bitcoin and even if someone kills you they can't get your bitcoin because they don't have your private keys so it's it's so safe it's so secure it's so secure it's actually dangerous you know i lost the keys to one of my litecoin wallets and i lost a couple hundred dollars <laughs> oh wow so and it couldn't be cracked my husband hired a, a black hat um a hacker from the internet and we weren't able to to crack it so it's so secure you, you need to protect yourself from it <laughs> yes Yes. Put it right, write down your keyword, your phrases and put them in separate places and put them in a, in a fire safe or something like that. Um, so hello everybody. My name is Graham Elwood. Boom. We, uh, I'm, I, I'm sorry. Let me do that again. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to set this up in a clip. So I always got to make separate clips while I'm live. Um, but first of all, I hit the like button folks. we got 422 people watching. Uh, we have, over 284 likes let's get the likes up to 300 everybody and let me just check over on the rock fan um where we're at on the rock fan um somebody wrote i'm going to read a couple uh questions here uh, my name is graham elwood you are watching the political vigilante i'm joined by a friend of the show and my my friend host of uh, out of the box with rosie rosie tran who's also uh our first official crypto Bitcoin guest was you, Rosie, last summer. Yay! Um, which is amazing. So I wanted to just read a couple of questions, folks. So you can support the show by going to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood and do the tip feature, which is a reading. We've been demonetized by YouTube. Oh my um, gosh, horrible. Which is horrible, but thanks to awesome fans, Patreon is helping, Venmo's helping, PayPal's helping, but mainly because... I put all my content on Rockfin, which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. I'm doing all right. I'm not like dying and they want to shut me up. So fine. Fuck YouTube and go to Rockfin. Anyway, before, before you ask your questions, I just want to let listeners know who are new to the crypto space. That's an example of the decentralized nation, um, nature of it. Excuse me. Graham is on Rockfin and he's getting paid. He owns a part of Rockfin. So it's kind of like a co-op, right? So YouTube, right? The, um, the owners of YouTube, and if you're a shareholder, but with Rockfin, it's it's decentralized and you're an owner, you're a creator. So that's how crypto is. It's it's like a co-op for people, right? A co-op for banking. You own your own bank, you are the bank, there's no central bank. I love that analogy. YouTube is the old way. I, I put content for this big monolith corporation. They determine what I can and cannot say. They determine when I get ads. They say I can't make money. They give me copyright strikes and bullshit like that. And Rockfin, I'm paid in Ray, so I'm a part owner in Rockfin. If you want to buy Ray, you can be an, a part owner in Rockfin. You don't even have to be a content creator. And it's blockchain, which I love. And so it's really, um, it's while while the YouTube demonetization has been frustrating, I think in the long run, it's gonna this it's better. It's a it's a happy accident. It's it's because or not an accident, but it's a it'll be it, it, you know whatever. We're making lemonade out of the lemons because. Um, it's building up Rockfin and it's building up my crypto uh, knowledge for starters. But so I want to answer a couple of questions. Um, this is from Mira Maxwell, shave your knuckles for justice, Mira. Uh, how about the environmental effect of gold mining? <laughs> um, mining of other metals used to store value. How about the energy to transport and store the physical assets? Wow. Exactly. Another great example. Wonderful and, example. And like, like diamonds, like here's, here's Bill Maher talking about this rich guy who goes to Hollywood parties. I don't know if he wears diamonds. He's probably got a Rolex, but he, he has no problem with diamonds, which are literally African slave labor is how di diamonds are mined. But no exactly. one, no one in Hollywood has a problem with that when they go to their award shows and they worth $40,000 worth of slave diamonds. Um, 
that's not a problem for everybody, apparently. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you for that, Jim Garrison. Great guest. Thank you, Jim, for supporting our show. Very much appreciate it. Um, Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Uh, Annabelle Corley watching from down under in Australia. Shave your knuckles for justice. Um, Wall Street will invest in anything that makes them more money. Their greed knows no bounds. For them to try and discourage regular Americans to invest in crypto makes sense. They will never change. Uh, this is a great point. Again, it's it's what we talk about on this show, what you and I have been talking about, follow the money. Where are the smears coming from? Who's generating them? And what is their motivation? And it's, it's like, again, Bill Maher doesn't want some 26 year old kid or single mom to become as wealthy as him. Cause he, he got his wealth through traditional media. Uh, I, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him as a comedian, but He's not as funny as he more because any once you become a once you have a these kids today bit in your act, <laughs> you're an out of touch old man. I'm sorry, you're done. He is, but his act. I saw the clip and it wasn't just that it wasn't funny; it was a lie. He was talking about things that were not factual. He was talking about things that were not well researched, and that was really really sad because it could have been funny if he took it a certain way and used facts. So I was really sad that he decided to go in that direction. And and he. You know, when he lumped them all together, I was like, God, he doesn't even under, he just sounds he like somebody know. that doesn't yeah. understand software or like just there's different technologies for things. Like Ethereum is like a technology. It's different than yeah. Bitcoin. He doesn't understand that. Watching everybody, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're unsub we've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.